Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. Grab yourself a cup of tea and just chill out for the next 30 minutes or so and stay with us. Such a privilege to be able to connect with you like this and to bring the wonderful guests that we have and subjects that can really be beneficial to you and your family. So uh, we love Home Keepers and we love you. A lot of you out there your number one pursuit really is being a homekeeper, and we appreciate you. I've got a return guest today, Heidi Janssen. And maybe when she uh, joins me, I, I'm trying to think how many years she's been coming on the program. And she and I have been ranting all these years about Common Core. And uh, we've got good news. The governor, our new governor of the state, is going to ditch it. So I think Heidi and I are going to take a little credit for that. But we want to bring you up to date on what's happening in education. This is so very important. There's some good things and there's some things you should really be troubled about and be praying about because God can change the course of these things, you know, and there's some very troubling things going on in our school system. And uh, we'll tell you about that. I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to fix one of those wonderful, you know, one pot meals you can get home from work and throw all the stuff in it and have something really good. It's called Easy Smoked Sausage Skillet. And uh, boy, the things in it are going to have so many different flavors and uh, we'll taste it and let you know what it's like. And of course, you can always get our recipes free. Before I join her though, this is an awesome book and I hope that you will order it. We've got more information coming up on the screen now for you. It's called Money Making Mom by Crystal Payne. Take a look at this. Money can't buy happiness, but properly managed, it can be an amazing tool to change lives and make a positive difference. That quote comes from Crystal Payne, wife, mother, and best-selling author of Money Making Mom. Crystal wants you to consider multiple money-making ideas, to dream big, and set long-term financial goals. This book comes highly recommended by financial expert Dave Ramsey, and we offer it to you for your gift of at least $17 to homekeepers. You may order today by calling 1-800-229-0059 or write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Oh, we've talked about money a lot on this program. A lot, <laughs> and I follow Crystal Payne uh, uh -huh. like every day. So yeah. I'm so excited that you have our book. Yes. Uh, how many years have you been on here with me? Do you remember? 110? Something no. like that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, five? But yeah. um, that's when you, um, did you get on the Dave Ramsey thing or something? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because they had some real problems in their finances. And I remember one thing you told me. You said, we sat down one day. Mm -hmm. And this is so key, I just wonder how many Husbands will sit down with wives and talk about this. So your husband was good at that. I'm gonna saute gonna, some smoked sausage. Yeah, this is smoked sausage talking. going in. <laughs> the information come up on your screen. How much? And I remember you said that you guys sat there and you wrote down what you make, and you said we make enough. Something's yes. wrong. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. We um, were eating out way too much. Mm -hmm. Just spending for you know, if you don't know what, if you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going. That's, That's exactly why you need a budget. Right. Uh huh. You need a budget. You have to write it all down and see it. And the other thing with uh, Stephanie, then you got hit, hit, hit with cancer and other things that kind of enlarge your expenses a bit. I was double upside down in the house at one point. Mm -hmm. I'm not anymore. Uh huh. Yeah. And so you know you can get it all straight and then get slapped real good. But but what would it have been like if you? Oh, what if we would have been there and then got slapped real good? Probably I would be bankruptcy. Yeah. 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 I'd be so, in a corner somewhere in the fetal position just crying. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I'd rather have more money. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Anyway, that book will help you give some ideas. Okay. Yes, get it. It's great. I've been reading it. It's wish, really good. I wish you could smell this. Yeah, okay. So we have smoked, smoked sausage. sausage. The ingredients are going to come up on the screen at the end. So if you have a smartphone or, a, or something, you can take a picture of it if you don't, don't want to pause it for your DVR. Okay. So there you go. So I have garlic. I have onions. And Susan left this for me to do because it appears I don't know how so to do anything. Well, on the show. she's there very we go. good at that. So there's onions and then Ooh, you red peppers. You can already peppers. tell this is going to be one. Now, you wouldn't put that in, would you? Fix it I would not put red peppers. She's not peppers. a pepper girl. No. 
No, but I'm just going to smile through it. Yes. <laughs> gonna smile through it. We're going to saute this just for a minute and let those onions and peppers just soften up it's a little bit. It's already beautiful. It smells, that smells, smoked sausage smells you, delicious. You might even forgive the peppers. No, no, no peppers. <laughs> no, you wouldn't put it in, but no. if you take a test, a taste can you work maybe i'll move take it yeah it? maybe i can just okay. just the sausage there's a lot of more good things coming in stay tuned yeah so we have broccoli we have chicken broth we have tomato okay. sauce instant rice and then we're gonna put cheese on top of it okay and the uh, broccoli is frozen yep so and it's already we've already heated it up so we can move this along because we have to get to heidi so we can take credit for common core being <laughs> I tell everyone I'm, you know, I'm 29, uh -huh. and that my daughter's 22, and somehow I blame Common Core math for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we well, if broth. you've ever seen examples of it, it's it's, it's torture to the children. It's, it's torture. I don't even want to use the words that. And it even is. the insane. I'm gonna crank this up. Insane idea of the kind of standardized testing they were trying to do. It's all in insanity is what it now, is. Now, does this go in there That's or do you put go it in on it? it? No, nope, okay. this is going to go in it because it's going to soak up some of that chicken broth. And you mm. want this to cook a lot longer. I am speed cooking. You need to let all these flavors just marry but together. But we have fulfilled the we, promise. This is a one-pot one meal. One-pot wonder. That's what it is. A one-pot wonder. Look how fast. Wonder. That fast. Look how fast it came So I'm good. just going to let it heat up real quick. I'm going to put some on your plate. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put a little cheese on top of it. It looks, Ooh, look it at go. it. It's like... Look at it. Uh -huh. So good. It's beautiful. Which, you know, you eat with your eyes before you eat with mm -hmm. your mouth. So a beautiful dish is always nice. Right? Oh, that really looks I good. I mean, this is just, take the red peppers out and I'm having this for dinner. Yeah. The, um, I was surprised that the uh, smoked sausage didn't cost much. Yeah. Meat's awfully expensive now. Meat is so I don't that's eat why much. you want meals like this. Mm -hmm. Because that this meat is not yeah, expensive. I, I don't eat much meat at all at home, but yeah. uh, we're we are meat eaters. So yeah. I have but I have venison, I have hog. Yeah, her husband hunts. Yeah, so I have all that in the freezer and then we mix in like chicken and so oh here's plate. Mm hmm Again, let this cook much longer. You want all that chicken broth to cook out and but we got to go. We got it to get to hiding. Then you put a little of this on Yes, it. please. A little cheese. Yep. Okay. I'm going to reach over you, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. So good, right? Make yeah, sure I, took a, I took a broccoli first. Mm. Mm -hmm. That sausage flavors everything in there. Yep. So do the red peppers. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I think you need to see a psychiatrist about your... Hey, we all have different tastes. Affinity. There's got to be something you don't like. Mm -hmm. What don't you like? Um, a lot of things. I'm just trying to think okay. of one I don't you like. You figure one out. Oh. Well, I'm going to make it, and then you're going to taste it. You couldn't get liver and onions down there okay. if you... Okay, we're making liver and okay. onions on the next show, and Arthur <laughs> Rippey's going to try... No. <laughs> all right, if you want this recipe, information's coming on your screen. Email's the best way, but there are other ways, so... Pay attention, and if you haven't met Heidi, I think you're going to love her, um, and I'm anxious for you to meet her. Stay here. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, if you haven't met her before, this is Heidi Janssen, and she is a mother. She teaches, does a lot of substitute teaching in school. She is a really wonderful singer, and always glad to have you here. Thank you. <coughs> um, how long ago was it? Do you remember your first time you came on the show? Oh, it's got to be four years ago. It has to be four years ago. Yeah, was it some yeah. regularity? Yeah. I saw a video somewhere where you were talking to uh, some people in the church mm -hmm. about Common Core. And I just wonder how easily the educational system slips these things in. Yeah. Parents don't know. That's right. Certainly your, your 
everyday man doesn't know. No, and they don't. And you know what? It's a good reminder for us to go back and remember why exactly it was we were protesting Common Core. Mm -hmm. And that was because it was created by a group of people, 29 people who had never spent a day in a public school, had never spent a day in a K through 12 school. They were college professors and such. And they cre created a curriculum. Well, it's not a curriculum. Um, it a, a set of standards that they took it from a college level and backed it down to kindergarten and the standards were not age appropriate either developmentally or cognitively for the littles. They need to think in concrete uh, fashion, not abstract. And so now we're seeing our abstract uh, those abstract concepts and strategies have left so many students behind in say fourth grade, mm -hmm. third grade. And I've got a lot of newspaper here. Um, okay, uh, we have a new governor, yes. Governor DeSantis, and uh, he says state must ditch Common Core. He That's did. He said the last vestiges of it. Yes. And uh, I've highlighted some of this. Uh, we stuck with Common Core, then we rebranded it, and it's all the same. That's right. And, and you told us that. That's uh, right. It all needs to be looked at. It all needs to be scrutinized, the governor said. A set of standards that sets goals for what K-12 through students should learn in language and arts and math by the end of each grade level. That's crazy. It is crazy. You're talking about cookie-cutter kids, mm -hmm. and they don't absorb every uh, subject the same way. Um, they were designed to be more rigorous than what many states previously had in place or adopted by Florida in 2010 as a part of a national effort to boost American standards for education. Yeah, it well, takes away the, it we takes away the local, you know, your, your farm schoolhouse yep. in Montana is different than the one. That's right. And we the, have seen the fallout. A mm -hmm. lot of Parents have decided to homeschool, mm -hmm. to pull their children um, into online learning where it's not quite as, um, I don't want to say not as structured, but certainly in our public school arena, mm -hmm. they have been, the teachers have been micromanaged. I mean, if you're not on the standard that you're supposed to teach at that particular time, then you're in trouble. And the teachers were angry. Yeah, well, you know, there was some. You, you just kept hearing this. Because everything had to be pinpointed to that test That's that right. would be given at the end of the year. That's right. So we call it teach to the test, mm -hmm. and it's abhorrent. But um, I found that the high school teachers were not so opposed to it. So even if you talk to a high school teacher now, they're like, oh, Common Core is great. I said, what grade do you teach? Oh, I teach high school. I'm like, okay, go, go. why don't you try elementary school? Why don't you try well, teaching those kindergartners? did they change everything the kid had learned about math when they got to high school? Um, no, but the, the standards only went to a certain point in high school, um, which was Algebra 2. So Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. But then they wrote additional uh, standards for calculus. Now, what, you've been doing a lot of teaching the last yes. year. Uh, she might as well be a regular teacher, but I don't think I she wants to. <laughs> actually, for the past week, I am the interim sixth grade teacher a math teacher for uh, a team at our middle school because the a full-time teacher left to work for the county for more money and better mm -hmm. benefits. I mean, yeah. So. You know, if, if anybody ought to be paid well, it should be our teachers and those that produce. Mm -hmm. what, what is it with, with unions and things? Do they pay the whatever just they because pay, they've been there a long they time? They pay dues. The teachers pay dues to the union. Uh, and it's like but you can't fire one of them. No, usually it's, it's, it's usually pretty yeah, hard. Yeah, it's like their insurance policy to be a member of the union. Um, I've I have noted that mostly the teachers who've been in the profession for a long, long time are the union members, and they have a, they're having a hard time convincing younger teachers to join the union. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to go through some of these things. Uh, Here's one that uh, in the library had a drag queen story hour. Oh yeah, that must be up in our area. Really? Well, mm -hmm. this is uh, Pennsylvania, but I, I watched this drag queen teach um, online and no wonder people are homeschooling. Well, they, you've got a lot of different types of people. And as we're seeing in the world now, 
and I told you this before we walked down, I said the enemy of this world, Satan is out in full force and he is not hiding himself anymore. And people are believing the, the untruth. Mm -hmm. But to have a drag queen give the story hour, that is just... And the parents who bring you their children there. You never would have there. dreamed of anything like that. No, and it's not on campuses. And I'm, I'm grateful because that's not what we teach our children. We have a, a different But isn't that the way they get system. put in the door? Because mm -hmm. <coughs> um, you, you water it down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Just like the, abortion the most is. Just like abortion is not offensive anymore. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not my choice for my family. But then, you know, my children have to see it. Now, uh, we're all over the map today. Yes, <laughs> Let's we go are. back Sorry. to Common Core. Okay, uh, let's back. All right, I read where some of the leaders said it's really going to take a lot of time and effort to switch back. Okay, I'm a very plain <clears throat> vanilla person. Why don't we just teach them addition, subtraction, multiplication, division? There's a millions of people who grew up on that, and they're doing fine. I will tell you my objections to Common Core are the abstract math strategies and um, if we, we actually could go back to our next generation Sunshine State standards. Those were the standards we had in place before the Common Core was adopted. And actually our science standards are still the next gen Sunshine State standards. Our students are still taking an FCAT on those. So what I understand to be true is that the governor's executive order is to take away the Common Core, but he didn't address specifically the testing. So he said the testing portion would stay intact, but how can you do that if you're testing specifically to this set of standards? Um, also, he said he wants it gone within a year. It's a ginormous task. The standards that we now have in place are enormous. They're bigger than, they're more micromanaged than any standards mm -hmm. we've ever had. I remember one time when you were on, I had a story of a young man who was sophomore in high school and he flunked this ridiculous test. He's a very smart kid. And you don't get a diploma, you get a certificate no. of completion. It ruins your future right out Absolutely. of high school. Absolutely. And I remember his mother saying he was weeping and said, Mother, tell me I'm not stupid. There wasn't anything stupid about him. No. And that's And we still have students who are who have, are taking the 10th grade Florida Standards Assessment over and over and over again, five times. Take it. They start when they're in their sophomore year and they take it every six months until they can finally pass it. And if they don't, they don't get a diploma. They can't go into the military, they can't go into law enforcement, there are other things they can't do. Then they, then they end up getting a GED, but I'll tell you, a GED after you, you leave high school is 10 times harder than doing course recovery in high school to try to get through. You know, uh, the whole spectrum is, is sad and so disruptive because Remember the stories of the children, not talking about high school, children who were so frustrated. Yep. And um, then the teachers were frustrated. Yes. It, it was just like somebody came down to stir the pot. In fact, you found out about it because your own son was taking it. You didn't even know it existed, right? That's right, because he came home and he had homework. And, and I how said, old was he? He was 10. Mm -hmm. He was in fourth grade. I said, well, what about these? What about why don't we just do a standard, you know, just multiply, stack it, multiply, just like we standard algorithm is mm -hmm. what we call it, mm -hmm. 24 times 13. And he goes, no, I can't do it that way. I said, what? you can't do it that way. He said, no, we have to use a strategy. I mm -hmm. said, well, where's the strategy? He goes in my classroom. I said, well, I'm not in your classroom. I'm right here, and I want to know what that strategy is. And he's brilliant in math. He's a freshman in high school taking AP calculus. He's got an A right now. He's doing well. And Common Core frustrated him. Yes, and he couldn't remember the strategy. I'm like, well, if you don't remember, I said, where are my, where are my resources as a parent? Why do you need a strategy when one plus one equals two? Right because they were grading the strategy, not the answer. You could get the answer wrong, but do the strategy correct, and you were good, you were golden. Okay, now our governor, who is a, a new governor since, uh, well, he was just inaugurated in mm -hmm. January, probably. Um, what about the rest of the nation? I mean, our governor has taken a stand and said he wants it out. Well, hopefully he's blazing the trail, but the rest of the nation, some of them are really stuck because billions of dollars have been poured yeah. into those curriculum companies. So we're thinking about replacing curriculum. 
not just the standards. And that's, where, that's where the money is. And that is where the money is. And that's what really was the driving machine. Uh, here's, a, here's another one. <laughs> uh, there's one. Uh, that's our governor. Yep. Redefining education. Oh, I have so much fun going through these. <laughs> well, I, uh, what have you got next? Uh, and this one, uh, high standards set uh, for, for the kids. The editorials, forget them. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, uh, and then I want to get into something else, but um, here's an article about introducing the Bible as an elective. Why not? I know it, and you cannot believe. Oh, the outrage? Oh, yes, yes. Indoctrination, the outrage, yeah, indoctrination. Yeah. I'm like, oh, but we can be mindful. Uh -huh. We've got mindfulness coming into our classrooms, and yoga. What do you think that is? Um, Harmless? Let's see. Mm. Since Florida schools already can add Bible courses, they reason, they reason that something larger must be. You know, that the pastors would teach it, stuff like this. So, But... Um, that's a good thing, and I know that Kentucky has opened up the school to the Bible to teach it as a book. What's why and that? why? Yeah, why would we oppose? And the the things in this article, which um, I just noted, and their opposition. Mm -hmm. I thought, I wonder if the Ten Commandments had been on that school in Florida. Yeah. Said, thou shalt not kill. Had, would, Somebody came in and killed seventeen. Would that would that have That's not a Holy taken Ghost, place? Yeah, Holy Ghost inspired commandments. Yeah, that is um, beyond the pale. Of course, they had them in class when I was a kid. Well, listen, they our our nation is saying that they're willing to do anything, and our 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 state is willing to do anything to keep our kids safe. And I will tell you that the behaviors on campus steal from instruction more than anything. Behaviors are out of control and it's not, they're not being disciplined. Children aren't and being you're disciplined not, at you're home. you're not in an urban school. No, 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 we're in an A school in suburbia in, you know, what is considered a semi-affluent area. And we have, we're 40% free and reduced lunch at our school, 40% at our school in our semi-affluent area. Why? Because we draw from a communi more communities that have have children that are at the poverty level. So it's we've got mi a mixture of students. But if you don't address the behaviors, why wouldn't you want to? Put yeah, that's got nothing to do with behavior. No. So, but so if you if you would like to cha make a change in school safety, then putting up the Ten Commandments would that really be that bad? Yeah. Not, not in my estimation. This is something I want uh, parents to understand. They need to get involved, for one thing. Yes, they do. Um, I have, <clears throat> my son-in-law is a teacher, and he said very hard to get a parent-teacher mm -hmm. meeting. Parents don't come. <laughs> Listen, I had a discussion this morning with our instructional assistant, and she said, um, I said, well, I think some of the, the parents are calling or contacting our, our assistant principal about the grades that they've gotten in my class. Uh, and she said, oh, my students? Because she handles some of the, uh, some students who, who are on accommodations. And, um, and I said, no, I don't think it was any of your students. She goes, well, if I knew that that would, is what it would take to get them on the phone because I can't reach them. Your most needy sad. students and the parents are, aren't, aren't very it, sad. You're not able to get them. Uh, this is something for uh, parents and grandparents to think about. <clears throat> Find out what's going on and get involved. Do you know that the United States ranks <coughs> 14th in education? I'll tell you, the nations that are ahead of us were behind South Korea, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Finland, the United Kingdom, Canada, the Netherlands, Ireland, and Poland. Wow. The United States of America is behind all of those. And we are the 24th in literacy. Think of all the nations ahead of us just in reading. And they don't just read one language. Mm -hmm. Most of other most other countries are also teaching <clears throat> uh, English side by side with their native tongue. When you think how we've squandered the blessing of God on this nation because we had God-fearing men who founded it. And it's very obvious in all of our history. Mm -hmm. And we have 
we have let it just deteriorate yeah. this way. I would just say again and again, the parents have got to be involved. I, t I talked to a couple of parents yesterday and they couldn't even tell me who their children's teachers were. Well, the other thing, I, I think child uh, parents should really find out what's going on. They might have to <clears throat> pick up some slack at home in teaching. Right. In teaching. I mean, you might have just a, a little partial homeschool going on there. But if I could say one plug too, is what we're dealing with right now is an exorbitant number of absences. Students just 20 days, 30 days, just You're not kidding. No, not coming to school. Where are they? So I missed my bus, had to stay home. Mom, nobody could give them a ride. Or just, oh, I had a headache. Or, you know, there's just something else. We, we haven't even gotten down to the bottom of it, but missing school. So they have to teach themselves. Well, we can't catch them up. This is a good reason for home keepers because all that stuff is from the home <sighs> and large population areas where the young boys don't have a dad. It makes all the difference in the world because the first teachers that got assigned mm -hmm. was mother and the father. That's right. So I hope that we've given you something to think about. When I started looking for the statistics, I had no idea that the United States of America was so far down that list on uh, the best schools around the world. Something's wrong. Yeah. It's corporate America trying to run our school system and now they're they're, you know, they're trying to run it into the ground. Mm -hmm. But I pray that with Governor DeSantis that they can make a change. Now our new commissioner of education is a lawyer. He does not have an education background. And in and, and in the past he hadn't been too friendly to teachers and parents. Yeah, so. and we're almost out of time, but <clears throat> they have a lot of power. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. It's a lot to think about, friends. Uh, I don't know anything really that's more important than to really educate this next generations that are coming up, and especially in the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That yeah. has to come from the home, my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't get all that from the church. They only have your kid an hour or so a week, but uh, raising godly kids in the home, that's really... It's really what Home Keepers is all about. And I hope we've given you some really good things to think about. This is very, very serious. The things that Heidi and I have been talking about are yeah. very serious. And I hope you'll take it to heart and I hope you'll join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a Home Keeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Home Keepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.